Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to teach you how to make the fastest, simplest, easiest axe handle collar that you can possibly make to prevent issues like this. Now what this is is damage from what's called an overstrike, which is basically just missing what you're trying to chop, missing the piece of wood and hitting the axe handle itself instead of on the blade of the axe. Now this happens to me on all different sizes of axes. This is my marble small camp axe and you can see I overstrike with it. And this is my chopping axe. This is the Cold Steel Trail Boss 23 inch handle. So I do it with both of them. I also do it with my maul and my sledgehammer. Now there are three common reasons that damage happens like this. One, you're inexperienced. You just don't know how to use the ax properly. And that kind of couples with reason two, which is the wrong technique. And number three, you're tired. You've been swinging the ax all day and your aim is just off because your muscles are just done. So for me, it's usually a combination of the three. I'm not an axeman, I'm not a bush crafter, and I haven't done a lot of chopping in my life, although I've done some, and now I'm having to do more since I have a wood stove. There are plenty of videos out there to show you the proper technique. One of the best is Cole Cracker Bushcraft. He does a great job at explaining things in his videos. Now the most common type of overstrike is when you come down over the top of the log and you're too far and you hit the handle like that. Overstrikes can also happen if you have a glancing blow like this. You come down over the log in a glancing blow and it hits. That's probably what I did in this instance. This is how you want to hit the log from the center outward. You don't want to hit the log in here like this either because once this goes through, you are going to hit your handle on this portion of the wood right here. So there are four types of materials that are commonly used as an overstrike collar on an axe or a swinging hand tool. One of those is some sort of metal, leather, some sort of plastic, or some sort of cordage. In my opinion, the cordage is the easiest, fastest, and simplest way to make that overstrike color. And you can easily replace it if you need to. Leather work is fun and it makes a nice collar, but it's much more labor intensive. As is the metal. Wrangler Star does a really nice overstrike collar on his hand tools, but in my opinion, it's just way slower and way more labor intensive. So the two best pieces of cordage to use for this project are 550 paracord or number 36 bank line. I don't have any bank line, so we're gonna use paracord today. You can also use jute twine, but make sure it's a thicker jute twine. This one is a four millimeter jute twine. Now the jute isn't quite as durable as it frays a lot, but it's easily replaced and extremely inexpensive. You can also use a really tough contractor's twine, which is this string here, which is used to string up forms. It's very, very tough, but it's gonna take you a lot longer because it's a lot thinner. Now let's show you how to make that collar with the paracord. So if you have a protective sheath that is on your ax head and it has a strap that comes around the back, you wanna make sure you adjust your protective ax handle collar to not interfere with that. As you can see in our case, we made this sheath a couple years ago. If you wanna see that video, check at the top of the screen. But this one just sits on the edge of the uh, ax head and doesn't fall off. No need for a strap, it will not come off. Now for us, we're gonna be using the paracord. And for a four to five inch collar on your ax handle, you're gonna need about 15 feet of paracord. If you use a thinner cordage, then obviously you're gonna need more. What will also determine that is the thickness of your handle. So what I found helpful is when you melt the end of your cordage, you wanna flatten it as much as possible, and you'll see why in a few minutes. So what you're gonna do first is make about a six inch bite in your cordage. You're gonna leave about an inch sticking up out of where the end of the collar is going to be. Hold it with your finger in place and start wrapping it around. Keeping it as tight as possible is also gonna help you when we get to the end. Once you're at a certain point, it's going to start to hold itself. Now make sure that bite that you made stays on the side of the ax handle throughout the entire process. So 
So here's a little trick. When you get to the end, you want to have about an inch of cordage left over. What we're going to do is put that through the remainder of our loop. Now while you're doing this, you can continually kind of massage it into place and tighten it up, cinch it up where you need to. From there, we're going to take our Leatherman or just a regular pair of pliers and we were going to pull on this top portion here and we're going to pull this little tail underneath all of this cordage, underneath the collar. Try to pull it about an inch underneath your collar. Now we can trim this piece off to about a half an inch and then secure it with our lighter. And that's it. Here is our collar. Super fast, super simple, and super easy. You can use it just like this, or you can take it one step further and make it a more monolithic piece. Let me show you how to do that. And we're gonna do that with this, Gorilla Brand Super Glue. Make sure when you're playing with super glue, you've got protection. So just take your glue, take the top off, and we're gonna pour it down onto our collar. We're gonna move it around with our glove and we're gonna get it into all the cracks and crevices. What that's gonna do is when it cures in about eight hours, it's gonna make this hard shell around it. It's also gonna fuse everything together because the paracord is made from nylon. So super glue will melt that. You don't want too much on here, but you want it to start to fuse the paracord together and soak into the wood a little bit. Got it. Nice work. <laughs> we hope that was helpful for you. Now I'm gonna show her how to do it. Now go check out this video right here, which shows you how to not get ripped off when buying firewood. Bye.